It's been a year since my sister Callie died. Now I can't sleep because every time I close my eyes, Callie's there to wake me up. The insomnia's gotten so bad, I'm not sure what's real anymore. There's a shadow living inside my head. It's angry, and I don't think I can stop it. My name is Harper Hart, and I'll see you in your nightmares. Journey into your own subconscious and listen to See You in Your Nightmares now on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Bridgewater is a production of iHeartRadio 3D Audio and Grim and Mild from Aaron Mankey. For full exposure, listen with headphones. Listener discretion advised. Ethan, honey. We want you. Ethan! Ethan. Ethan, baby, wake up. Call for help. Okay. Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Oh, Jeremy! There's no fucking service. Oh, come on, Ethan. Maybe it's me. It's me. It's Nana, okay, baby? Wake up! Did you find him? He won't wake up. Here, let me. Don't, don't, don't touch him, okay? Just do Make yourself useful and just go for help. Yes, hello, this is Jeremy Bradshaw. I'm at Assinet Ledge in Freetown. Can you hear me? Freetown State Forest. There's a young boy here who seems to be injured. We want you. We want you. You're coming. Ethan? Ethan, baby, can you hear me? Come here. Come here. Ethan! Here, let me. Stop it. What are you doing? Hush. Noctus animus. Nunc at venet. Noctus animus. Aeum dimitere. Celeste. Noctus animus. Nunc at venet. Noctus animus. Aeum dimitere. Nos volute. Nos volute. Celeste. Noctus animus, nunc out venet. Ethan! Noctus animus, eum dimitari. Eum dimitari. Eum dimitari. Ethan! Nana? Yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. It's, it's me. Nana. Yeah. yeah. He's. He's gonna be okay. You'll be okay, Anne. Yeah. Wasn't the fire out? Yes, it was. What did you do to him? He was possessed. I exorcised the spirit from his body. Oh, so now you're a priest. I told you, I'm attuned to the spirits. I spent my whole life learning the specters and shadows of this place. Your grandson is not the first wandering soul in the forest I've set right. You... Thank you. I'm sorry? Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Anne. The Hoskins? How is he? When can we see him? He's all right. You can see him in just a moment. He's not all right. He was speaking in tongues and covered in symbols. Olivia! Physically, he's fine. A little dehydrated, has some minor cuts and bruises, but you can take him home tonight. Oh, thank God. (sighs) Thank you, Doctor. Did he say anything to you? Um, no. He seems to still be in shock. The only thing he said was that it was happening again. Does that mean anything to you? I, uh, I, 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 I don't know. Doctor, you can go ahead and see him now. I'll get started on the discharge papers. Anne? 
Mm. Don't you want to go talk to him? Oh, uh, I, I don't know. I, but, I mean, yes, of course I do. But I just, uh, just going to give family some time. Anne, you are family. I'm blood. It's uh, not, not the same. I'm glad the child is safe. Yeah, thank you. Anytime, Anne. Truly, I am here to help. That's really all you were doing in the woods tonight? You were helping? Of course. We're a small community. We have to look after one another. And I'm better equipped than most to deal with this particular danger. The danger of missing children? Those who get lost in the untamed places. Right, because you're so attuned. Yes, Mr. Bradshaw, I am. And you can gaze upon that fact with as much derision as you like, but it is just that, a fact. And I don't need your approval, nor anyone else's. I know myself and what I'm capable of, and that is all that matters. And what are you capable of, Celeste? Anne was right. Anytime something happens here, you and your cabal of friends seem to be right at the center of it. Why was there a bonfire there tonight? What were you all doing? That wasn't one of ours. No? You seem pretty practiced at stoking it, almost like you built it yourself. I didn't stoke those flames, Mr. Bradshaw. You know just as well as I that I was feet away tending to Ethan. The fire started anew on its own. That's not possible. Of course it is. Perhaps the wind picked up an ember, pushed it into some dry kindling at the center, or someone had left an incendiary amongst the logs to cause confusion and fear. That's what you'd say, isn't it? A perfectly rational explanation for every single event, even if you have to stretch it over your memory of what actually happened, like trying to fit a rubber band around the world. Where's Katie? I'm sorry? She was with you earlier. If you were really part of the search effort, you'd know you were supposed to be in pairs. And so we were. But where is she now? She... She got frightened. What did she get frightened of, Celeste? You? Of the forest, Mr. Bradshaw. Katie is... She isn't ready for the entire truth of Bridgewater. What does that mean? She's grieving. Mourning a loved one is what brought her and so many others to the gathering. You are not a support group. We are many things. Katie wanted to contact her mother. That's why she joined the gathering. Contact as in t talk to her ghost? Talk with her ghost, commune with her spirit, whatever you want to call it. I think being confronted with all those spirits scared her, especially after what happened with her friend. She's afraid of angering the souls that dwell within the forest. She's just not ready. But she's okay, isn't she? She'll be absolutely fine. Your grandson, on the other hand, I... What? What? What is wrong with him? Hey, Anne, he's, he's fine. Why don't you go check on him? Don't you tell me what to do, Bradshaw. No, I think he's right, Anne. You should go be with your family. Okay. You shouldn't do that. Do what? Scare her like that. She's already gone through enough and Ethan is fine. You just heard the doctor. That doctor doesn't know what she is dealing with. They won't be able to take Ethan home tonight. Just you watch. I am watching you. Then, as ever, you are looking in the wrong place. What do you mean you're keeping him overnight? At request of the police, we've been asked... I can explain this. We're dealing with a potential kidnapping case here, Mrs. Hoskins. It's safest to have Ethan here overnight for observation and station a uniformed officer outside his room. You think he's still in danger? Well, we're just trying to figure out what's going on. We'd like to interview him soon, if that's all right. Absolutely not. I will talk to him and you can be in the room silently. 
Ah, Bradshaw and Becker, the worst crime-solving duo since Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie and Clyde didn't solve crimes, they committed them. Exactly. Well, excuse me for being protective of my grandson, who, if I recall correctly, I found before the police did. Yes, well done, Ms. Becker. We're all very glad that Ethan is safe, but this is an active investigation, and you are a civilian. You either let me talk to him, or you don't talk to him at all. Fine. Mom, it's all right, Shelly. We're not going to scare him. We just need to know what happened. <sighs> okay. Okay. Not you, Bradshaw. Dan, I was right there with you. Mm -mm, you sit this one out. But... It It's been a year since my sister Callie died. Now I can't sleep because every time I close my eyes, Callie's there to wake me up. The insomnia's gotten so bad, I'm not sure what's real anymore. There's a shadow living inside my head. It's angry, and I don't think I can stop it. My name is Harper Hart, and I'll see you in your nightmares. Journey into your own subconscious and listen to See You in Your Nightmares now on the iHeartRadio app. Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Sweet. It's all right, Ethan. You're safe now. I know. I'm, I'm not scared. Then talk to me, baby. I'm not a baby. Okay, okay, you're right. I'm sorry, you're tough as hell, and I know that you've been through a lot, but we really need you to tell us what happened. I... I don't know what happened. Okay, just just talk me through the weekend, okay? You were camping with your Boy Scout troop? Yeah. Yeah, we've been camping in Freetown a lot. Mm -hmm. It's not like I didn't know what I was doing. I know, you're a really good camper. And we go camping and hiking all the time. You know that forest. Yes! Exactly. Uh -huh. And I'm like, used to the noises and stuff. The, the noises? Well, you know, the birds and animals and the trees and stuff. Forest quiet, not house quiet, right? Right. Right. I'm used to the forest quiet, but some of the others get scared. Like the first night, there was all this cracking and like something skittering. And like Mason, he's only 10. Mm -hmm. So he gets scared, you know. He was really worried it was some kind of monster. Because I guess his older brother told him there was monsters in Freetown. But you know better. Yeah, I do. Mm-hmm. Except... Except what? Uh, could you get him some water? Go on, Ethan. Right. So, last night... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was last night. Nana. What day is it? Honey, it's Sunday night. Sunday. Okay. So, yeah. Last night. Our second night. It. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Nana. I know there aren't monsters. I know that. Mm -hmm. Just bad people. That's what you always say. The only real monsters are the bad people. That's right. But I don't even remember walking up to the ledge. I just don't remember. The ledge? Yeah, above the lake. You were on top of the ledge? Yeah. Ethan, no. No, no, we found you right next to the lake. N no. No, you couldn't. I was... I was up there. I woke up there. Okay, all right, let's just, just go back for a second, okay? Let's, let's talk about what happened Saturday night. There were voices, but they didn't... They didn't sound like people, Nana. They weren't people. Did you see something, Ethan? 
It was like what Grandpa used to talk about. Grandpa? Yeah. Dad's dad? Right. Grandpa Hoskins. Yeah. Who else would I be talking about? No one. Just keep going. Grandpa used to talk about the Pugwudgies, you know? Wait, you're not Wapanog, so you wouldn't know. They're like fairies, except really mean. They've got quills and spears and fire. Mm -hmm. And they even trick people into getting hurt. And Nana, I think I saw one. You saw Pukwudgie. It was talking to me, mm -hmm. trying to get me to go with it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why I did. There was these lights. I could barely see past them. They were big and so bright and in like, like a triangle. And there was a person, but they looked wrong. And at first I thought it was one of the other boys. They were short whoever it was, but... You think it was a Pugwaji? It was something. Something. And it was saying, we want you, come here. So I went, I wanted to. I don't know why, but I wanted to follow the lights. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, I, I know I shouldn't have. Oh, honey, no, it's okay. It's okay, you didn't do anything wrong. What's the next thing you remember? Captain, please. It's okay, Ethan, please go ahead. I don't, I don't know. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Nan. I, I don't know, I don't it's remember okay. anything. It's okay, oh. it's all right, really. You were there, in that woman, that's all I know. You mean at the lake, by the fire? Yeah, with all the lights? Lights, what, what do you mean, uh, the bonfire? No, the lights, you saw them. Right, Nana? What, what lights, baby? All around you, you and that woman. They were floating lights. No, Ethan, th there weren't any lights. I know what I saw. Okay, okay, I, I do believe you. Ethan, do you remember anyone else being around tonight besides me and Celeste? The, the, the woman, anyone? Um... I, I don't know. Okay, that's okay. It's just, uh, honey, do you know how you got those symbols on your arm? Symbols? Mm-hmm, yeah, you, um, they washed them off when they admitted you, but you had these symbols all over your arms. I did? Mm-hmm. Why? What do you mean? Oh, we don't, we don't know. I mean, we didn't recognize them. Maybe, maybe one of the boys uh, did it, you know, as a prank or for fun. They were written in blood. Okay, Captain. What? Captain, please. No, honey, it's okay. W what does he mean, blood? Who's blood? No, it's, you know, we're, we're just not sure. You know, the police, the police is testing it now. And I, what happened to me, Nana? What happened? You got lost. That's all, baby. You just got lost. Is it true? The stories you always told, are they true? Are there monsters in the woods? They... No, son. There aren't any monsters in the woods. We believe that you were kidnapped by a cult. Does the gathering sound familiar to you? The... the what? Nana, what is he talking about? Nothing. He did... Honey, don't even listen to him. Ethan, the woman who was with your grandmother, Celeste Corey, did you recognize her? Captain Haddock. No. I, I don't think so. She didn't come to your camp and lure you away? No. No, there was no one there. Was... But you heard a voice, right? Yeah. Yeah? Well, was it a man's voice? Stop leading the witness. He's not a witness. I don't know, Anna. It was... It was whispering. And the voice led you to the ledge? I guess. I don't know. I woke up and there was a voice and then I woke up again and was on the ledge. Mm -hmm. I thought, I thought I was dreaming, but there were lights. 
How did you get to the lake? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I'm scared, Nana. It's okay. Ethan. We are done, Captain. We're gonna let him rest. Right. Okay. Nana? Mm -hmm. It's okay, baby. I'm gonna stay here with you. You're safe. Could you send in my mom? <sighs> yeah, of course. How was he? He's, uh, all right. <laughs> His family's gonna be with him tonight, so. Not you, you're not, you're not staying? I, uh, I just wanted to give them some alone time. And, mm -hmm. do you, um, I mean, when, when did, uh, ugh. Just spit it out, Bradshaw. Where's, where's Shelley's father? I just, I don't know. I mean, you, you two don't seem very close, and I, you never. He's gone. He's been gone for 40 years. Right, sorry. You know, you're right, we're not close. I messed up with Shelley. I never wanted kids, but uh, when her dad, I wasn't a good mother, but I'm trying. Messed up with Liv too. <laughs> she seems to love you. You know, I mean, when she was a kid, I was too obsessed with finding out what happened to her grandfather. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying with Ethan, really trying. He was their miracle baby. They, uh, they didn't think that they could have another one. And then I don't see anything happen to him. Well, he's safe now. Mm-hmm. And 40 years. Yeah, yeah. What? You said he's been gone for 40 years. I think we should just go to sleep, Bradshaw. It's been one hell of a long night. You knew he was waking up in the middle of the night. And. What do you want me to say, Jeremy? How long? When, um. So that means. Huh. Did my mom know? She found out. So this whole time, all these years, fuck these decades, you knew I still lived here. Yeah, and I, I was going to tell you when you got older, but then you moved out to California with your mom. That was for college. I know. And then I came back. Why? Why did you come back? That was Everything right here. happened to you here. I know, but why did you come back? Why would you stay? I have family here. Yeah, so do I, apparently. How could you not tell me? How could my own mother not tell me? She didn't want to ruin the idea of your dad, and neither did I. They were gonna get divorced, and then when he went missing, we, uh, you know, we both thought it would be kinder to keep you in the dark. It's like uh, all I ever am is in the dark. I try so hard 
to know everything I can. And I am still constantly in the dark. I am sorry. Oh, fuck you. Fuck you, Anne. You don't get to talk to me like that. Why, because you were fucking my dad? That doesn't make you someone to me. Oh, don't make it sound tawdry. We were together. We were in love. I still am. Yeah, well, guess what? He is dead. You dragged him into your crazy theories and you encouraged him to go out there and do something stupid and dangerous and now he's dead. Don't you blame me for that. I told him never to go out there on his own. We were doing everything together. Oh yeah, you sure were. Weren't you? You were doing everything together. When I woke up and I realized that he was gone, I couldn't go after him because I was watching you. So whose fault is it really? What are you talking about? How did my house not look familiar to you, huh? You stayed over sometimes. When they split up, your parents decided that there would be joint custody, especially when we found out that I was... <sighs> so we, uh, we were trying to make it comfortable for you at my house. The weekend your dad went missing, your mom was out of town visiting a friend, you know, getting some space. So we had you for the weekend. Well, I... I don't remember that. And we were all going to go for a hike in Freetown. You know, I used to join you guys on your Saturday hike. I do them with Ethan now. And he stays in the same room you did when you were little. No. No, those hikes were always just the two of us. <laughs> Honey, you were just a kid. I, I, I'm, I'm not surprised that you don't remember. Why are you lying to me? I'm not, Jeremy. Not anymore. But you're telling me that it's my fault. It's my fault that my dad is dead? But he's not dead. Will you shut up, Anne? He is dead. He's as dead as you can get. And he's been dead for 40 years, and I am sorry. You never found anyone else. But that's your fault. I'm sure you were just trying to protect me, but just... But you know, that was never your job either. But, um... You could have, uh... I could have had... You should have told me. I know. I have a half-sister. Does she know? No. No, I never told her. She asked about her dad so much, but I never told her. It's one of the reasons why we're not so close. Is that supposed to make me feel bad for you? No. These are the choices that you made, and you can't blame your ghosts or your monsters or your cults. You can't blame the Bridgewater Triangle for your unhappiness. Neither can you. Well, I'm glad Ethan is safe. He's my nephew. I have a nephew. Yeah, and a niece. I don't think I can ever forgive you for this, Anne. I know. I know.
Bridgewater was created by Aaron Mankey and written and directed by Lauren Shippen, with executive producers Aaron Mankey, Misha Collins, Matt Frederick, and Alex Williams. Supervising producer Trevor Young, editing and sound design by Trevor Young and Matt Stillo, and music by Chad Lawson. Starring Misha Collins as Jeremy Bradshaw, Melissa Ponzio as Ann Becker, Karin Sony as Vipin Karana, Lori Allen as Nancy Collins, Cheryl Umania as Officer Bautista, Victoria Grace as Katie Franks, Will Wheaton as Captain Haddock, Hillary Burton Morgan as Shelley Hoskins, Jonathan Joss as Joseph Hoskins, Sabra May as Olivia Hoskins, Samuel Marty as Ethan Hoskins, Kristen Bauer as Celeste, and Nathan Fillion as Thomas Bradshaw. With additional voice acting by Brigham Snow, Andrew Nowak, Julia Moritzawa, Jarvis Johnson, Anne Brielle Bresnan, Kristen DiMacurio, James Oliva, and Liran Amiel. Learn more about the show over at grimandmild.com slash Bridgewater. And find more podcasts from iHeartRadio on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. And as always, thanks for listening. It's been a year since my sister Callie died. Now I can't sleep because every time I close my eyes... Callie's there to wake me up. The insomnia's gotten so bad, I'm not sure what's real anymore. There's a shadow living inside my head. It's angry, and I don't think I can stop it. My name is Harper Hart, and I'll see you in your nightmares. Journey into your own subconscious and listen to See You in Your Nightmares now on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Sweet.